Peter said to the people in Acts chapter 2, he preached the gospel. And he told them the story of what Jesus did. And then the people asked him an interesting question. The people said, what shall we do now? And I think that's such a brilliant question to ask when you hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. What now? What should I do now with my life? And Peter responded. He said, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Repentance means to make a 180 degree turn back to God. Tonight, are you turned towards God? Is your heart turned towards your creator or are you living your own way? Are we serious about a God that died for us? Are we serious about the needs and the injustices that surround us? Are we serious about a God that died for us? But not only a God that died for us, a God that was raised from the dead and he is alive tonight. The same power that raised him from the dead lives in us tonight. I know this, I'm being super awkward by leaving long pauses, but I'm wanting you to think I'm wanting you to think. I'm stating the obvious here. But I think awkward is good. Because I can shout and froth. And I can make you, I can make you la- laugh and we can sing another song. But at the end of the day, is our heart turns towards God. Either we're real about this or we should just walk out. The Bible says, no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Paul said, all I want to know is Jesus Christ and Christ crucified. That's all I want. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But how much more are we seeking the addition as young adults? How much more are we going to be trapped in the generation Y culture and be stuck doing nothing except being like the world, but coming to church. I'm in this category as well. And tonight, I wanted this baptism moment to be for all of us, to say to this old life, you know what? You know what? Jesus did not die for nothing. Jesus did not die for nothing. Jesus died and rose again so I could become a new creation and live out this new life. Colossians 1 verse 13 to 14 says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He's done all this. He's taken us out of the darkness. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 to 13 says, The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, we're all different here, all churches are different slightly, and though all its parts are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Jesus was by a well, and he met a lady there, and she was just going about her business Each day she'd go to the well, take out some water so that her family and her village could drink and survive in a hot desert. And Jesus is there, and he's not even meant to be there because he's hanging out where the Samaritans hang out. And he shouldn't even, as a rabbi, be even talking to this woman as a Samaritan woman. He shouldn't even be engaging in any discussion. But he knew that she was searching for something more than just what this world could offer through a physical water. And so he begins a discussion with her, and they, they chat, and Jesus gets straight into it, and basically has a word of knowledge, and he, he knows that she's not married to one guy, but she's had many marriages, and now the guy she's even with right now is not her husband. So she instantly knows that this guy's something different, because know, he knows about her past. And so her spirit opens up, because her sin is 
revealed in this moment, but Jesus doesn't judge her for her sin. He's creating a moment for grace. He's creating a moment for relationship, a real encounter. And so the revealing, maybe potentially if you're feeling maybe convicted tonight or you know there's things in your world you need to get right, but you've been hiding it from God. God knows about it, but He's not judging you even though He still knows about it right now. And so the point of repentance is that we get rid of our pride and acknowledge to God that we need saving and that we need a relationship with God. God already knows about our stuff. He already knows about your junk, yet He still hasn't struck you down with lightning. And so what are we doing? Not fully opening up to Him and saying, you know what, God, I repent tonight. I'm going to get my life right. And He says to this, this lady, says, you know, I've got a living water. If you drink this, you will never thirst again. When you drink of God, when you are born again, when you taste of God, you can't, nothing else tastes as good. It quenches all the thirst and the appetite and the passions that you have for this world, you begin to thirst after God more than anything else. When we begin to sing, we don't sing because that's what we do. We sing because we're so thankful that He's poured out His love on us. When we give in an offering, we don't give because a pastor tells us to. We give because we've been saved. We don't read our Bible because that's the right thing to do. We want the Word of God because it's living and active and it's, it's our food. It's the bread of life. It's what sustains our spiritual man. All the things of God are not a chore. They are living water. And God wants to pour that out upon all of our life. I believe He wants us to have a fresh encounter. Nicodemus encountered Jesus that night. He didn't encounter a religious dude that knew a whole bunch of stuff, but he did say this, you must be born again. Peter didn't say, hey, go to an eight-week course. You've just heard the gospel, now go to an eight-week course and then do this and do this and do this, and then maybe you can repent and then get baptized. No, he said, repent and be baptized right now. God is here right now. And now's the time for God to do something amazing. Now's the time for God to do something awesome in our lives. Amen.